Hi guys, welcome back. This time I'm going to be doing another user request video for you. This is one that I've been hearing for a really long time, but I just haven't been able to do it because I haven't had the proper figures, basically. And what I'm talking about here specifically is a World War II Japanese soldier. Uh, now, obviously, there's not a lack of Japanese soldier figures available. There are plenty of miniatures out there for them, and they're not too hard to get, but what's been bothering me is that I think a lot of them are really, really racist, quite honestly. There are tons of Japanese figures, and it seems like almost every manufacturer seems to succumb to creating these sort of very uh, stilted, cartoonish, really caricatures, honestly, of Japanese people. And it's quite difficult, in fact, I found to come up with a range that just makes fairly neutral, realistic looking, you know, people. Which is what, you know, I mean, come on. I don't see why all the Japanese figures out there have to look like they stepped out of a World War II U.S. propaganda poster. It's just silly. I mean, they all are kind of yelling, they have squinty eyes, big buck teeth, and there's a disproportionate number of them with glasses. I mean, come on, I think it's good to see wargaming uh, soldiers wearing glasses. But seriously, think how many uh, uh, soldiers or units you have in um, American or British or German ranges where there's uh, soldiers wearing glasses. They're really underrepresented, quite frankly, considering that there were quite a few people who wore glasses. Um, but if you look at Japanese armies, you will always see that there's way, way more uh, of, of, of the soldiers wearing glasses than pretty much anywhere else. It's like almost overrepresented. It's, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a nasty stereotype, honestly, and it really bothers me. So I really wanted to come up with some figures that I could paint for you guys that I thought were pretty, you know, were fair, pretty fair and pretty reasonable, and that took me a while to locate. Um, so the figure that I finally ended up grabbing here. I'll show you if you, you make it so you can see a little bit better. This figure is from a range produced by Brigade Games, which is an American uh, company. They, I believe that they have made these themselves. Of course, they sell a lot of other people's figures as well, and I think they also sell through North Star in the UK, though I don't know if they sell all of their figures that way. So, these figures are, not only are they not I don't think ridiculously biased in a way that most Japanese figures are. Uh, they're also very well sculpted just as figures go. So I thought they were a very good choice. These are, they're fairly simply clad, but they'll let me hopefully demonstrate to you how to paint a basic uh, Japanese uniform. And um, I've already gone ahead and base coated that figure as I always have with gray enamel. I haven't painted the skin yet because I do want to go over for you how to paint sort of an Asian skin tone, Japanese Asian skin tone, because I know that's something that a lot of people are curious about. I did talk about my very, very, very first video on painting a Japanese um, Ronin Samurai, but it was kind of an old, kind of long, tedious video, and I can understand a lot of people don't feel like watching that. So I am going to cover that again, and then I'm just going to go into the sort of the basics of a Japanese uniform for you. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So obviously there's a lot of variation in uh, Asian skin depending on where you go. It's going to be darker, it's going to be lighter, but in general one thing that most Asian skin tones have in common is they have sort of a yellow brownish base to them, which is something that you do get in some European skin, but in general European skin has a more rosy red pink undertone. So I'm going to start out by base coating this skin using spear shaft uh, shade. Uh, I'm then going to apply a wash of Reikland Flesh Shade by Citadel, which is the same wash I basically use on all skin tones. It works equally well everywhere. Then I'm going to start highlighting. My medium skin highlight in this case is going to be a Chestnut Light from that Foundry Triad, which is a good sort of, it has sort of a definite yellowish tan cast to it, so it's fitting into the whole theme of keeping sort of yellow and tan base colors. Obviously, everyone painting these is not gonna have access to foundry, so a good rule of thumb is look for colors that don't have a red or pink cast. Look for uh, more yellow based colors and you'll be fine. I'm 
I'm then going to paint all the recessed areas on the flesh using um, Vallejo Black Red. It's the same color I use on um, other models. I know I said we don't want to have red skin tones with this Asian flesh, but it works okay still as a recess color. So that's going to go in places like between the fingers, uh, the eye sockets, and the mouth, under the nose, things like that. The third highlight color on the skin here is going to be Buff Leather Light, also from a Foundry Triad. And as you can see, I'm applying that to areas where light would be hitting, uh, especially like on the tops of fingers and the like, and on the face, of course, on cheeks and nose, lips, those kinds of areas. And I've watered the paint down pretty thinly. Uh, I actually have done that with all three colors that I've used so far. Uh, and I'm applying it in thin layers and blending it out and then building it up where I want a more concentrated look to my uh, to my colors. I'm going to apply a final very extreme highlight to places like uh, the knuckles, the tip of the nose, the lips, things like that using uh, Foundry Boneyard Light. This is a color I also use as an extreme highlight on other types of flesh and it is a very sort of yellow toned um, color so it works very well here too and it, the reason I can also use it on the European uh, skin tones, the more European skin tones, is because I already use, in that case I usually already have such a reddish base to work from it still looks okay. This color if it's thinned down enough is still going to be well it's transparent enough that it's still the colors underneath are still going to show through so it will really just sort of lighten them up and you know but you'll still maintain sort of the correct skin tone so it's a great you know overall highlight color and it works great here too I'm now going to start working on the uniform. Uh, I found the Japanese uniform actually be remarkably easy to paint, mostly because it's really uniformly one color. You know, it's not like some uniforms where the pants are a different shade from the jacket and the putties are all different. No, actually, it seems to be the case from my admittedly limited research that in most cases, everything was really pretty much the same color. The only part that was often different was the hat. It was slightly darker, but because our soldier has a helmet on, we don't even really have to deal with that. So we're, as the color for pretty much the entire uniform and the putties, we're looking for a sort of a light khaki color with a slight greenish cast to it. Uh, so the base color I'm using here is a Foundry Raw Linen Shade, but I wanted to make it a little bit browner because it's still a little green for my liking. So I have taken some of the uh, Spear Shaft Shade, actually I'm going to use all the colors I used to paint the flesh and I, in this in painting the uniform. So I mixed the Spear Shaft Shade into very slightly into this base color and I'm just going to apply it everywhere. Next I'm going to apply a wash to the entire uniform area that I just painted and I am going to be using Agrex Earthshade for this though I'm going to admittedly keep it pretty light. I don't want a really heavy thick wash here because I have a fairly uh, delicate color and I don't want to overpower it even in the recess areas. The first highlight I'm going to put on the uniform I'm going, is going to be using um, British Equipment Canvas Shade with a little bit of the medium flesh tone mixed in actually. So in this case that's going to be Chestnut uh, Light just to get a little bit of brownness to it as I said before and keep it from being too green and too yellow. And I'm going to apply that pretty much everywhere. I thinned it down quite a bit so that I can layer it on and build up color where I need it but basically cover any really extreme areas of wash from the last step because you don't want really high contrast in most places with the exception of in the putties where you've got those very clear wraps and I, you want to spend some extra time and attention painting those carefully so that the each wrap will be well defined and you'll be able to still see the dark color in between because you don't want to lose your work that you from the last step with the wash so pay a special attention to that, but otherwise you can just put this everywhere and go over the whole figure several times, sort of gradually building up color where you need it. The 
second highlight on the uniform is going to be um, British equipment canvas medium, or just normal, whatever you want to call it. And, and I'm continuing my theme of mixing a little brown, and this time I'm using the flesh highlight shade for it. Very logical. So I've taken the uh, buff leather light this time and used that to add a little brown to that. And I'm now going to apply that once again in a fairly sort of watered down state, well not really watered down, but thin, uh, everywhere that I want to build up plenty of lights. And as you can see, I'm once again really focusing on those putties, doing a careful, neat job there and defining all of the wrappings. That's probably going to be the single most difficult thing on this figure, actually, the where you're going to have to be the most careful. The rest of it is actually quite straightforward and easy. The rest of, otherwise, I'm just going to be going back over areas where I want light, blending it out, um, and, you know, applying it heavier on his shoulders and the tops of his arms, his knees, you know, his rear end, wherever I want there to be more lightness. Um, and you see this uniform is quite nicely sculpted. You can really see all the seams in the fabric. So you want to be careful also not to paint over those. Make sure you leave the dark color down in those. Uh, use the wash that you did earlier, you know, to keep those areas dark and be careful not to cover them up with your, you know, successive highlighting layers. I'm going to add one final extreme edge highlight to the uniform where it needs it. And I'm going to do that by taking the British Equipment Canvas Light and mixing that a little bit, or actually a lot, into the last color I made, the last highlight color. And that just will create a significantly lighter tone, which I can then apply sparingly to areas that I, where I want to really, you know, make sure where I really want to pick things out. So you can see I'm really applying it sort of around the edge of his cuffs or along the edging all of the seams in his uniform since they're so clearly defined and when you have, as I've said in earlier videos, when you've got uniforms with a lot of clear seams defined in them, it's really a uh, pays to run a light edge highlight color along those. And also the putties, that's another place where you're really going to want to apply plenty of that highlight color sort of to define them quite extra and actually if you look at Japanese uniforms it appears that the putties are often a little bit lighter in tone than the rest of the uniform so it even makes sense to apply uh, some extra light color there and uh, otherwise I am going to put a little bit of this on sort of the tops of, of really sharp folds and on his knees places like that where I really where I want some really extreme light but otherwise as you would expect this color should be applied sparingly and mostly well used as an edge highlight, as described earlier. I'm now pretty happy with the uniform, so I'm going to move on to his water bottle and his helmet. Now, the helmets um, on Japanese soldiers sometimes had covers on them, the fabric covers, which would have been basically been the same color as the rest of the uniform, but I didn't want to do that here just because I felt this figure was so overwhelmingly one color already, I wanted to get some variety in. So I'm painting his helmet in just the normal sort of dark grayish green uh, color that their helmets seem to have been. Um, I am base coating the helmet in the canteen using just um, Vallejo German Gray. And I am going to then highlight it by mixing a small amount of German uh, uniform into that, which is sort of a grayish green color. Um, and I'm going to make maybe two or three highlights, adding very sort of successive small amounts of the German green into it to build up color on sort of the front and top of the water bottle and especially on sort of the top of his helmet. And I'm, each successive addition of green is very, is very subtle so that I can very gradually build up color because, you, you know, you don't want this to feel too too strong or overpoweringly green. It really should be more of a, a grayish color, but the, just, just a slight green cast to it, really. So, you know, just don't overdo the green is the main thing here, but you don't have to go too overboard and make it too light either. Now, what I can tell from the sort of photos that I saw of Japanese soldiers was that uh, while their uniform was sort of a slightly greenish light khaki color, they had equipment and strapping that was a slightly different shade. It was a little bit browner, a little creamier in tone. It wasn't, it, it didn't have that quite, it's quite so much yellow in it. Um, and those areas include his, um, sort of the straps um, for his water bottle and also sort of his, I don't know, his mess bag as well would have been that color. And also the straps holding on his helmet. 
Also in a lot of pictures though, it's hard to tell, it appeared to be the case that he's got sort of cross straps that are helping to hold his putties on and those seem to have also been a lighter tone than the rest of the putties. So all of those areas I'm gonna paint in a slightly different shade. Also I want a, kind of a light khaki color, but uh, something a little bit brown or something a little bit creamier. So I'm gonna just be using the um, Foundry um, Boneyard triad for this. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna really adapt it any. I'm just gonna start out by applying the, uh, the, the base shade, the, the Boneyard uh, shade everywhere to those areas. And then I'm gonna highlight with first with the Boneyard medium color and then with the Boneyard light color. I am going to try to preserve as uh, more of the, uh, the, the shade and medium color in this case and I sometimes do. So I'm going to be kind of, try to go, go thinner with the highlight color because uh, I don't want this to feel too white, too pale and too bleached out. I want there to be more sort of brownish, uh, you know, more of a brownish cast and a little just, just darker look to this. So don't, you know, don't highlight too far and, and, and don't go too overboard with the, the lightest color in the Boneyard Triad when you're doing this. Next, I'm gonna tackle two different areas kind of simultaneously because they use similar colors. So the first area is going to be his uh, belt and sort of his belt pouches, which were seem to have been made out of a rather reddish leather color. So I'm base coating those areas with um, Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown. And the other area that I'm gonna work on simultaneously is the stock on his sort of machine gun, uh, rifle, whatever it is. Um, and those areas are going to, or that area actually is going to have a base coat of bay brown shade. Once I've done that, I'm gonna start highlighting both areas kind of simultaneously because they use similar colors. So I'm gonna start out by um, applying uh, bay brown medium as a highlight to the leather belt and belt packs, which is, it's basically what I do with most of my leather. It's my standard you know, way of painting. I've described it before, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much now, but it should be applied fairly generously to the leather areas. I'm then gonna move on to chestnut shade, and I'm gonna kind of apply it to the edges of all the leather areas and blend inwards. Fairly straightforward, don't go overboard with it. And I'm gonna use it also as a first highlight on the gun stock, and I'm gonna apply it much more generously. They're much more thick because I wanted that gun stock to be much redder to be a fairly strong, you know, have a fairly strong red color. Uh, and then finally, I'm gonna take a chestnut medium and I'm gonna apply that as a very subtle edge highlight to the leather, especially since his belt packs here are really kind of concealed under his arms. So there's not as much light coming, hitting that area. So I'm not feeling like it needs a really, really high highlight. And I'm going to apply it also to the gun stock and again, much more generously around as an edge highlight where the wood sort of meets the metal and it, all around all the edges at the back. Uh, and it's still going to be an edge highlight, but it's going to be applied much more generously on those areas because I want it to be a much stronger red brown color and not the same with not the same really deep dark brown undertones that I'm going for on the leather. So even though I'm basically using the same color palette for two different kind of pieces of equipment on this guy, they're going to end up looking uh, unique because of the amount of color I'm using and how I'm applying it. His boots are next on my agenda and what from what I can see in pictures these seem to have been kind of a grayish black but with a very clear brown cast too especially where the leather is worn a little bit so I'm going to be base coating these with a mixture of German gray and German camouflage black brown from Vallejo so it's a kind of a warm gray color I guess I'm then going to use um, the bay brown trad from foundry to highlight this so I'm going to take bay brown shade as sort of a general highlight which I'm going to apply pretty most areas of the shoes except you know the edges and seams then I'm going to take bay brown medium I'm going to apply that more to light areas where you know I expect more light to hit and then finally I'm going to take the bay brown light color and really use that as an edge highlight on the, sort of where there's seams to emphasize those or on his toes or any areas where I expect there to be quite a bit of wear so the end result is here that we're going to get sort of a, kind of a grayish brown shoe but it with a very but with clear like brown cast and brown highlights to it I'm 
I'm then going to be doing the metal on his uh, sort of machine gun. I am using here the Vallejo German Gray, which I've mixed with some Vallejo Air Gun Metal. Not very much gun metal here in the base coat. It should be mostly a very dark color. And as I've observed before on modern guns like this, usually the more modern they are, the darker black they're going to appear and the less kind of shiny metal you're going to see. So, you know, go easy there. So that this whole area is being uh, base coated in the mix described. I'm then going to take and mix a bit more gun metal into that um, and go over the whole gun. It's a little bit more, but then it sort of more subtly in areas where I want a little bit of light to hit. Just be really careful here, but that's going to sort of be my highlight sort of along the top and edges of the gun. And then finally, I'll take just some pure gun metal and really only apply that to areas where you expect there might to be like wear, where he's really handling the metal wear, sort of it's going to get sort of worn. So, you know, around the trigger, obviously, around maybe the edges of his magazine, that kind of thing. But go really easy on those really shiny colors like that when you're painting guns because it's really really easy to overdo the shininess on this type of modern weapon. Now finally our Japanese soldier is wearing sort of a headband around his helmet. Um, these seem to weren't worn all the time but they were uh, usually white um, and they seem to be, it's sort of a cultural thing. I think they were for good luck. I'm not 100% sure on that, or, you know, it was sort of part of, you know, the more traditional Japanese warrior culture that got sort of adapted and they kept doing this in World War II. Um, I am going to be base coating this area with a mixture of Arctic Gray Medium and a little bit of the German Gray just to uh, darken it down is the base color because Arctic Gray as I've mentioned before, shade and medium are very similar to one another. So I'm just going to use the Arctic Green Medium and darken it myself, basically, in this case. And I'm going to apply that as the base coat. I'm then going to take pure Arctic Gray, uh, thin down, and I'm going to use that sort of as my first highlight and, you know, sort of blend it out. And it's a very transparent color, so you'll want to go over it several times and build up light areas where you need them. And the final highlight is just going to be white. As uh, simple as that. You want to really concentrate it on the front of the headband because we're going to, you want that to appear really bright and draw a lot of attention. And obviously on the tops of all of the folds at the back and kind of the knot where it's tied there as well. And it'll take probably several layers before you've got, you know, enough bright whiteness there kind of to, you know, look good and to look convincingly white because obviously this should be white. It should appear white and not like it's gray. And then really the final step here is to be going to be painting a symbol on the front of the headband. This varied. It could have been sort of Japanese characters. Uh, there were various things done. Uh, what I really like here, and it's really because graphic, it's bright, and it has a nice contrast with the otherwise dull uniform, is to put the Japanese, you know, traditional rising sun symbol, and that's just really a red dot. So I'm using black red as a base coat, and then highlighting it using Citadel uh, Mephiston Red, followed by um, Evil Sun Scarlet, just building that up there and creating this nice, really striking red dot. It's a, and I think it's a great accent for the rest of the uniform. And here is the finished um, Japanese soldier. I, I really enjoyed painting this. It was a simple figure, but I th think it's really effective. Um, I think the main thing you hopefully will learn from this is uh, even if you aren't using the same colors I am, the main trick to painting Asian skin tones is to uh, always look for sort of brown or yellow bases to whatever colors you use. Avoid pinks and reds, and then you'll basically be okay because that's going to be the main difference between the skins from that part of the world and uh, those from, you know, more European areas. The uniform itself, it's, it's, it's very similar to things that we've done before actually, um, and there's so many different khaki uniforms, people, all different armies were using it at, the, at this time, 
And so, you know, you can, the best thing to do is really just look carefully at pictures of whatever uniform you're going to be painting and sort of try to see what sets it apart from other khaki uniforms. You know, look for, look for whatever makes it unique. So usually they'll have some cast. Is it kind of dark brownish? Is it more greenish? Is it yellowish? Look for, there's usually going to be some Thing, some sort of way you can describe it, some sort of like defining color in the uniform. And, and that's what you need to be looking for when you're deciding how to paint these khaki uniforms, basically. What is, you know, how would you, what color would you, you know, describe as, you know, really influencing it. And that'll help you, you know, pick your color palette, basically. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe, like it, share it with your friends, and leave me comments. I got a lot on my last video. I really appreciate it. I got tons of suggestions. I know everyone really wants to see more modern subjects, so I'm going to try to deliver on that front and come up with more modern, you know, type soldiers as much as I can because I know they're popular. They get a lot of hits and people really enjoy watching them. I guess that's what people are really into playing right now. I don't know. So I'll be working on more of those in the future as soon as I can. Uh, and so I guess I will see you next time. And until then, happy painting. paint the flesh and I, in this and painting the uniform so I mix the spear shaft shade into very slightly into this base color and I'm just going to apply it everywhere next I'm going to apply a wash to the entire uniform area that I just painted and I am going to be using Agrex Earthshade for this, though I'm going to admittedly keep it pretty light. I don't want a really heavy thick wash here because I have a fairly uh, delicate color and I don't want to overpower it even in the recess areas. The first highlight I'm going to put on the uniform I'm going, is going to be using um, British Equipment Canvas Shade with a little bit of the medium flesh tone mixed in actually, so in this case that's going to be chestnut uh, light just to get a little bit of brownness to it as I said before and keep it from being too green and too yellow and I'm going to apply that pretty much everywhere I thinned it down quite a bit so that I can layer it on and build up color where I need it but basically cover any really extreme areas of wash from the last step because you don't want really high contrast in most places with the exception of in the putties where you've got those very clear wraps and I, you want to spend some extra time and attention painting those carefully so that the each wrap will be well defined and you'll be able to still see the dark color in between because you don't want to lose your work that you from the last step with the wash. So pay a special attention to that, but otherwise you can just put this everywhere and go over the whole figure several times, sort of gradually building up color where you need it. The second highlight on the uniform is going to be um, British Equipment Canvas Medium, or just normal, whatever you want to call it. And and I'm continuing my theme of mixing a little brown, and this time I'm using the Flesh Highlight shade for it. it look to my uh, to my colors I'm going to apply a final very extreme highlight to places like uh, the knuckles, the tip of the nose, the lips, things like that using uh, Foundry Boneyard Light. This is a color I also use as an extreme highlight on other types of flesh and it is a very sort of yellow toned um, color so it works very well here too and it, the reason I can also use it on the European uh, skin tones, the more European skin tones, is because I already use, in that case I usually already have such a reddish base to work from it still looks okay. This color, if it's thinned down enough is still going to be, well, it's transparent enough that it's still, the colors underneath are still going to show through, so it will really just sort of lighten them up, and, you know, but you'll still maintain sort of the correct skin tone. So it's a great, you know, overall highlight color, and it works great here, too. I'm 
I'm now going to start work on the uniform. Uh, I found the Japanese uniform actually be remarkably easy to paint, mostly because it's really uniformly one color. You know, it's not like some uniforms where the pants are a different shade from the jacket and the putties are all different. No, actually, it seems to be the case from my admittedly limited research that in most cases, everything was really pretty much the same color. The only part that was often different was the hat. It was slightly darker, but because our soldier has a helmet on, we don't even really have to deal with that. So we're, as the color for pretty much the entire uniform and the putties, we're looking for a sort of a light khaki color with a slight greenish cast to it. Uh, so the base color I'm using here is a Foundry Raw Linen Shade, but I wanted to make it a little bit browner because it's still a little green for my liking. So I have taken some of the uh, Spear Shaft Shade. Actually, I'm going to use all the colors I used to paint. I'm going to start out by base coating this skin using Spear Shaft uh, Shade. Uh, I'm then going to apply a wash of Reichlin Flesh Shade by Citadel, which is the same wash I basically use on all skin tones. It works equally well everywhere. Then I'm going to start highlighting. My medium skin highlight in this case is going to be uh, Chestnut Light from that Foundry Triad, which is a good sort of, it has sort of a definite yellowish tan cast to it, so it's fitting into the whole theme of keeping sort of yellow and tan based colors. Obviously everyone painting these is not going to have access to foundry so a good rule of thumb is look for colors that don't have a red or pink cast. Look for uh, more yellow based colors and you'll be fine. I'm then going to paint all the recess areas on the flesh using um, Vallejo Black Red. It's the same color I use on um, other models. I know I said we don't want to have red skin tones with this Asian flesh, but it works okay still as a recess color. So that's going to go in places like between the fingers, uh, the eye sockets, and the mouth, under the nose, things like that. The third highlight color on the skin here is going to be Buff Leather Light, also from a Foundry Triad. And as you can see, I'm applying that to areas where light would be hitting, uh, especially like on the tops of fingers and the like, and on the face, of course, on cheeks and nose, lips, those kinds of areas. And I've watered the paint down pretty thinly. Uh, I actually have done that with all three colors that I've used so far, uh, and I'm applying it in thin layers and blending it out and then building it up where I want a more concentrated. I wanted to come up with some figures that I could paint for you guys that I thought were pretty, you know, were fair, pretty fair and pretty reasonable, and that took me a while to locate. Um, so the figure that I finally ended up grabbing here, I'll show you if you think it so you can see a little bit better. This figure is from a range produced by Brigade Games, which is an American uh, company. They, I believe that they have made these themselves. Of course, they sell a lot of other people's figures as well, and I think they also sell through North Star in the UK, though I don't know if they sell all of their figures that way. So, these figures are, not only are they not, I don't think, ridiculously biased in a way that most Japanese figures are, uh, they're also very well sculpted just as figures go. So I thought they were a very good choice. These are, they're fairly simply clad, but they'll let me hopefully demonstrate to you how to paint a basic uh, Japanese uniform. And um, I've already gone ahead and base coated that figure as I always have with gray enamel. I haven't painted the skin yet because I do want to go over for you how to paint sort of an Asian skin tone, Japanese Asian skin tone, because I know that's something that a lot of people are curious about. I did talk about my very, very, very first video on painting a Japanese um, Ronin Samurai, but it was kind of an old, kind of long, tedious video, and I can understand a lot of people don't feel like watching that. So I am going to cover that again, and then I'm just going to go into the sort of the basics of a Japanese uniform for you. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So obviously there's a lot of variation in uh, Asian skin depending on where you go. It's going to be darker, it's going to be lighter, but in general one thing that most Asian skin tones have in common is they have sort of a yellow brownish base to them, which is something that you do get in some European skin, but in general European skin has a more rosy red pink undertone. So I 
Hi guys, welcome back. This time I'm going to be doing another user request video for you. This is one that I've been hearing for a really long time, but I just haven't been able to do it because I haven't had the proper figures, basically. And what I'm talking about here specifically is a World War II Japanese soldier. Uh, now, obviously, there's not a lack of Japanese soldier figures available. There are plenty of miniatures out there for them, and they're not too hard to get, but what's been bothering me is that I think a lot of them are really, really racist, quite honestly. There are tons of Japanese figures, and it seems like almost every manufacturer seems to succumb to creating these sort of very uh, stilted, cartoonish, really caricatures, honestly, of Japanese people. And it's quite difficult, in fact, I found to come up with a range that just makes fairly neutral, realistic looking, you know, people. Which is what, you know, I mean, come on. I don't see why all the Japanese figures out there have to look like they stepped out of a World War II U.S. propaganda poster. It's just silly. I mean, they all are kind of yelling, they have squinty eyes, big buck teeth, and there's a disproportionate number of them with glasses. I mean, come on, I think it's good to see wargaming uh, soldiers wearing glasses. But seriously, think how many uh, uh, soldiers or units you have in um, American or British or German ranges where there's uh, soldiers wearing glasses. They're really underrepresented, quite frankly, considering that there were quite a few people who wore glasses. Um, but if you look at Japanese armies, you will always see that there's way, way more... Uh, of, of of the soldiers wearing glasses and pretty much anywhere else it's like almost overrepresented it's it's a stare it's 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 a, it's a nasty stereotype honestly and it really bothers me so i really